Welcome everyone. Welcome to our webinar, 5 Tips to Bring Your Organization Story to Life Using Silk. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Susan Hopart, the online training producer here at TechSoup. And I'm actually really super excited about this presentation and live demo of Silk. Um, I know this presentation will be relevant and interactive to the important work you do. We appreciate the fact you answered our registration questions. That helps Alex, our presenter, and TechSoup better understand your organization's needs. We're going to be viewing live demonstration of Silk and give you the opportunity to ask questions. Please know your opinion is very important to us. At the end of this webinar, or if you have to leave early, there will be a pop-up box with a survey. I do want to implore you to complete that survey. That helps us get better helping you. Let's take a few minutes and review our platform ReadyTalk. I'm going to give you a few tips. There's a chat box in the bottom left-hand corner of ReadyTalk. This is where you can chat questions, specifically if you're having technical problems like you, you can't hear anything, um, you're having trouble with the audio, or you have a question for our presenter. That's where you can put all of your chat. During the event, we're going to be queuing the questions. So at the end of the event, we will try to answer every one of your questions that you've chatted in. We will be collecting the questions and posting answers in a document that will attach to the webinar itself after we record it and we post it on our website. Keep in mind um, if you lose your Internet connection, you can reconnect using the link that was emailed to you. You also should have received a reminder email if you registered more than an hour ago. And keep in mind that much of this session will be a live demo of Silk. If you're hearing an echo through your computer speakers or are having any issues with the audio, you can dial in using the toll-free line listed in your registration email. As I mentioned, we do record the webinar, and it will be available on our website in about a week. It's also where you can view any past webinars. It's at www.techsoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. You can also go to our YouTube channel at https www.youtube.com slash TechSoup video. As I mentioned, you will receive an email in about a week with a link to this recorded presentation and any collateral materials, so like the Q&A or any PowerPoints. You can also follow along on Twitter. You can tweet us at TechSoup or by using hashtag TSWebinars. Let me tell you a little bit about our presenter today. Joining us today is Alex, and Alex is the Head of Marketing and Business Development at Silk. Silk is a free data publishing and visualization platform used by dozens of news organizations, marketing teams, and nonprofits to build publish-ready databases, maps, and visualizations. Alex was formerly the tech editor at Business Week and he's bylined in numerous national publications and is still blogging and writing. Alex also participates in data journalism education for college media and the open data movement. Um, I've, I've been working with Alex over the past few weeks um, and talking about his presentation. It's, it's going to be a very good presentation. You'll be able to walk away with a lot of tips for you to use this program. So I encourage everyone to click on the link that was silk.co, so you can also follow along. Also on the back end here we have Ali Bisbeekin, and she's going to help with any technical questions or audio. I'd like to take a minute to review our objectives. Today Alex is going to be showing you how to use Silk to build an online impact map, create an online story canvas, create an online interactive visualization, Publish online a simple sortable table, turn contacts into a simple online database, and also answer all of your questions. A few things about TechSoup. We're located here in San Francisco, California, and I'd like to know where you're coming from. So in the chat box, go ahead and chat in the city, state, or the country that you're connecting with us. While you're doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about TechSoup. We're a 501c3 nonprofit like many of you joining us today. We work to empower organizations around the world 
to help them get the latest tools, skills, and resources. This helps them achieve their mission. You can see from our map here that we serve almost every country in the world. We have about 62 partner NGOs around the world. The need is global, and we have a dedicated website for countries outside of the U.S. at www.techsoup.global. This is where people outside of the U.S. would access technology donations. Wow, we have people from all over – Vacaville, California, San Ramon, Wisconsin. Wow, and we have like 300 folks on the line. Wow, we have some people from San Francisco, Great Texas, Alabama. Welcome everyone. Fantastic. A little bit more about TechSoup. Um, we've helped organizations get more than $5.2 billion in technology products and grants to NGOs around the world. These tech products and grants come from more than 100 corporate and foundation partners. So before I turn this over to Alex, I do want to ask you a question. This is your live poll question. This is your opportunity to fast this finger. We'd like to know what specifically you'd like to learn today. Build an online impact map. Create an online Canvas story. Create an interactive visual. Publish a simple sortable table. Or turn contacts into a database. Answering this question will help Alex hone and customize his presentation today. And whoa! Those responses are just coming in. Wow, looks like a couple are tied. Online Story Canvas. Oh, it's going too fast for me to even count. Wow. It looks like – I'm going to give everyone another minute. We have about 200 responses. Let's see what we have. Wow, that's 64, 65% would like to create an online story canvas. And then that's closely followed by creating an online interactive visual. Wow, thank you everyone. Thank you for chatting in and for answering that poll question. Excellent. Well, Alex, it looks like the presentation you've, you've prepared is going to cover all of this very well. Very cool. I'm super excited to be here, Susan. And thank you so much to TechSoup for having me on the webinar. So it's, we're going to turn it over to Alex, ready to go. Okay. You can hear me okay, Susan? Yep. You are you're okay, perfect. Cool. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with everybody so you can start to see um, my desktop, and we'll actually walk through a live demo of how to build Silk um, and how to use it. Uh, and unlike other sort of webinars that are based on PowerPoints, um, you're actually going to be building something or watching me build something that's going to be live and on the Internet as you see it created um, that you could actually see on your mobile device, on your desktop, or anywhere. The goal of Silk is, as Susan said, to let anyone build uh, interactive data visualizations, websites, maps, super easily without technical training. Um, to give you an idea of some of the things that people use us for, they use us for um, things like web canvases about small college basketball players, uh, corruption in Brazil, um, student journalists use us, lots of nonprofits use us. So for example, um, we have uh, Pittsburgh Playwrights is a small nonprofit that uses us. And I'm going to show you a little bit of what, it, what silks look like. And I'll start with sort of one of our proudest ones, which is actually TechSoup. Um, TechSoup uses Silk for its impact stories and maps. Um, and this is a map that was, is maintained by TechSoup. It's hundreds and hundreds of impact stories around the globe. And each one of these points uh, is a specific impact story uh, that can then be looked at and examined. Um, and so here they have a little bit of the text. They have an image. Uh, some of the data about the organization, and they're using Silk to build this map, but also as essentially an online database of the impact stories. So what I'm going to do now is show you um, this is what the database or basically spreadsheet looks like inside of Silk. Um, and this is the same thing that we turned into a map. Uh, now this is the power and the idea behind Silk, is that we take spreadsheets, or tables of data, and make it easy for you to turn them into far more useful things. 
Now, you can also build things manually with Silk. But for example, remember, we were starting on this TechSoup impact stories, and I turned this into a table view. Um, let's say we wanted to add a little bit more information to it, and um, maybe I wanted to, rather than build a map, I wanted to build a donut chart. This is our visualization palette. You can pick from different types of visualizations. Um, and so now what we did basically is we built a quick donut chart. I'm going to pick, um, let's say, uh, something continent. And that will show us the number of program and member stories by continent. You can see it's 49% North America, 34% in Europe. Um, now this visualization that you're seeing is actually live and on the Internet right now. Um, so even though I don't control this silk, I can turn it into interesting visualizations. And as you saw, anybody can do that. Um, you know, if you wanted to as well, you could also share this visualization, just this URL as a short link, um, or you could embed it in your website. Um, so we generate um, embed codes, which would let you embed it in a WordPress blog, on a website, in a, in a Medium post, which is well, one of only a few visualization platforms that lets you do that. Um, and the super neat thing about Silk, I'm going to go back to our, our, um, our home page here actually, is that uh, some of you are probably watching this from uh, a mobile browser. So Silk is, as a whole platform, 100% um, responsive. So what you're seeing now would be, it's the middle of my desktop, but this is roughly what it would look like on a mobile phone. And so you can see the map size down, uh, all of the different pieces in it, um, they all just fit. So it just works. And it's very nice for nonprofits or other organizations that don't have big tech budgets, don't want to think about how do I build a mobile-ready website or mobile-ready visualizations. We just do that for you. Um, so let's take a look at some of the other silks that have been built by other nonprofits, and then we'll go ahead and dive into the building ourselves. Um, so this is actually a silk of analytics by the National Breast Cancer Foundation, and they're using us to map out uh, to build charts to map different data around their videos, for example, or around um, the comments, likes, and shares on the different videos. So you can see some of the different charting types. There was a line chart up at the top. Um, this is a column chart. Um, they also added videos. So you can actually put playable videos embedded inside of the Silk as well. So it's not just data visualizations and text. It's also multimedia, such as videos, audio, images, uh, slide share, live Twitter feeds, uh, all of this can be embedded inside of Silk. And that's why it's really um, a, a data storytelling canvas. So Quebeca is a bicycle empowerment program in South Africa, and they used us to build a, a very beautiful data story canvas. So you can see here's sort of the text part of the canvas. They embedded a picture, some more information. Um, then they built some charts. Uh, a simple map showing the number of bicycles distributed and specific data down there and a little video and their Twitter stream. And this probably took them about 45 minutes to build. And if you actually dive back into the data just like you did with TechSoup, each of these data cards, we call them, contains data about this particular row or region. So this is a row on a spreadsheet. And that's a core construct of Silk. Um, these are the column headers, and this is the data inside of the columns. Uh, and that's the way Silk works. We take what would be a row on a spreadsheet and turn it into what we call a data card. You can also, also construct the data cards uh, by hand. But let's keep looking at a few of, of the other um, NGOs Silks so that you can get a better idea. Um, this is uh, Arab, rights, Arab digital rights data set. So this is something that a very cool organization in, um, in Lebanon called SMEX, or Social Media Exchange, built with us. And this is a map and visualization showing um, how digital rights laws are, um, are in the different Arab states in, in North Africa state. And so they built a map. They built a nice bulleted table. They have um, images, slide shares. Uh, and you can see they also use a multi-column layout. So you can do slightly more fancy things with this. Uh, it doesn't let you have sort of true web authoring where you can adjust every bit and piece, but it does let you have quite a variety of ways to display your data 
and do it visually and you know in a beautiful way. Um, some of you may have heard of Human Rights Watch. So they used Silk for uh, their campaign last May, I was to believe, uh, I believe tracking uh, anti-LGBT uh, legislation around the world. Um, and this map shows uh, sentencing category types. Um, and they again use the mosaic of country map, so you can build nice mosaics with images um, and some visualizations. And this they embedded in their blog. They drove traffic through this, and it drove phenomenal awareness and engagement for them uh, around this topic, which as a human rights organization is something that they feel strongly about. Um, small organizations love us or are enjoying using us too. So this is the Pittsburgh Playwrights, Theorite, uh, Pittsburgh Playwrights Theater Company. And they created a nice little story gallery, which is also a visualization type, of, um, you know, of all the playwrights with their bios. And uh, each one of these playwrights, too, um, has their own data card with the image on it, so you can add them there. Um, and I want to point out one thing about the data cards quickly, is that if you look, so I highlighted the URL section. We not only take each row and turn it into a data card, but each row actually becomes its own web page. Um, that you can edit by adding images or text. Uh, this is powerful because it makes your data very transparent and exposed. And so when people are looking at uh, the Internet or searching, they can often find data that you've created because you, rather than it being trapped in a row somewhere, it's actually a live web page that if they search for the URL or search for, say, like, you know, clean up information in Lake Champlain, which this is something that Vermont Public Radio built with us, they would find not only these pages in this silk, which they built, um, but also probably some of the specific location data, so for different parts of Lake Champlain or different years. Um, and a lot of public radio stations are using us because um, this is a really nice way for them to build these data storytelling canvases quickly and easily and actually embed the whole site as an iframe um, in their domain so that it basically looks like part of what they're doing. And again, even with the very complicated layouts like on, we have on this version, on this silk, you can see um, it's all responsive and completely works you know, just on mobile. I'll scoot down a little further so you can see. So these were multi-column layouts. We reduced them and simplify them so that they all display beautifully on mobile. Um, I'll take a quick pause. I've gone over a lot and ask Susan if there's any questions right now. Um, we're also happy to share all of these different sites and information uh, later on after the webinar. Great. Thank you. Yes, we do have a couple of questions um, specific to um, creating maps. Um, someone is asking if they'd love to create a map of where their patrons are, but it would be very local um, to a specific city and state. So it would be neighborhoods. Can your mapping function be this localized? So absolutely we can. Um, and let me see if I can pull something up quickly that would show that. Um, we can put it down to the individual levels. Uh, I'm trying to think if I have a good silk that, that shows that right now. So the way to think about data in silk is we're as accurate as your map data is. So if you give us a street address, um, we could plot down directly to a street address. Um, if you just give us a country name, then we'll plot to the country name. But it's really a factor of how granular you want the data to be. If you give us six addresses on the same street, we'll plot a map that shows the different addresses. I think that answers the question? Yes. Um, yes. And you'll see a little bit of that as we go ahead and build the maps. I'm not going to build them as granularly as that, but you'll get, you'll get a bit of an idea of how it works. Um, so the title of the webinar today is Five Things Nonprofits Can Do With Their Data. Um, and we're going to stick pretty closely to that. And we're going to build um, first an impact map, then some sortable tables, or just one sortable table, um, then uh, some data visualization, so interactive story data, interactive visualizations that you could use, um, and then uh, an employee directory, and then finally, um, uh, that's a sort of grouping. So this is another visualization type. Finally, uh, I'm going to build a data storytelling canvas, which we haven't actually constructed yet. And I'm going to show you how we can do that live and on the fly and how quickly you can do it. Um, so let's go ahead and start with an impact map. And what I'm going to show you now is basically the data set that I'm going to use. Um, so in Excel, 
this is an impact map, or this is a, a spreadsheet of organizations that are using open data, nonprofits using open data. Oh, I'm sorry, this is, forgive me, Susan, I totally forgot about this. So here, here's our quick, uh, our quick party trick, which we'll show you just to, um, you know, to give you a, a quick flavor on silk. Um, this is actually the attendee list for the webinar, anonymized, um, and Susan shared this with me. Um, and so I'm going to actually go and um, later on, if we have time, I'm going to turn that into a silk for you, which you can then look at and analyze the attendee data. Um, but for now, I'm going to go grab this data, um, which is actually, this is the spreadsheet, and it is linked and easily downloadable on the website that, um, that I am posting. And Susan, you can actually share this if you want, so if people wanted to go look at that. Um, the webinar is at silk-webinar-4techsoup.silk.co. Um, Let me see if I can put that into the chat room really quickly. Uh, where can I get my chat window open? That's probably it. Um, okay. And this is now out there. So this is basically the canvas that I'm working from. And you can access this later, and we'll probably add some things to it later as well um, that will give you more resources. So we'll start with building an impact map, and I'm going to use this spreadsheet. What this spreadsheet is, is this is actually data from an organization called the Open Data Enterprise Organization. And it's a nonprofit that tracks and maps open data to um, is how it's used by organizations. So um, they built a very cool thing called the Open Data Enterprise Map. Um, and I'll pull that up really fast so you can see it. Um, and this map is something that they've built, which is beautiful and fairly complicated and um, you know, super nice. And I'm going to show you how to build something that's almost as good just from a spreadsheet and then build all these other things as well. Um, so this is the open data impact map. Um, open data for a lot of nonprofits too is a powerful thing. I highly recommend you exploring it if it's, if it's relevant to your organization. So let's go back to the spreadsheet. Now I'm going to simply grab this. I'm literally going to copy all, copy it, and make sure I have the whole thing. Uh, let's see, make sure I get all of it. So copy all, and I'm going to go into Silk. And so you remember this impact map that you're seeing here. Um, I'm going to go and create a new Silk. And we'll call this just test two for webinar. And you remember how I copied all of that data into my clipboard? Um, so these are the different ways that you can create pages or data cards in Silk or upload data into Silk. Um, I'm just going to paste that data right in, and I'm going to click Import. And now what you're seeing is actually a live preview of what this will look like, what each data card will look like inside of Silk. Um, I only pulled 48. The data set is closer to 900 total. But just to keep things speedy, because if you have 900 data cards going up, it tends to slow down a little bit. Um, so you can preview, preview some of these. And you see here, actually, we pulled an image out of a, a web, out of a web page. So if you go back here, you'd see Abrelatum is an organization in Chile. Um, one of the columns, I didn't do this for all of the sites, but I had a college this column that's called image. And when you look at this, you'd see that this page has a URL with a .jpg in it, which is basically, that means there's a picture on that, on that specific web address. So we can pull pictures in off of the Internet from some of these types of pages. We can't do it from Dropbox or Google Drive because they protect it, but it's something to think about if you want to quickly and easily take, say, images that are in your WordPress blog and put them into a silk. It's very easy to do it that way. As you see down here, this is actually like, WP content, so we can pull those kinds of things in. Um, so let's go back here, and um, I'm previewing the data. So this is basically what your spreadsheet looks like. Let me go and change that. Sorry, a little error message there. Um, love when that happens. Um, and just taking a look at the different things, and the gears on the side too, if for some reason you wanted to um, split something on commas or ignore fields. Um, so for example, like the other field, probably not going to be useful for me. I'm just going to click ignore. Um, when you see up here too, the data card title, this is the name of your data card or what we would use as the unique identifier for this specific um, row on your spreadsheet. 
The reason we need that is because if we do things like counting or visualizations or maps, um, we need each row to be unique because if they're not unique, then we get confused in the counting or the mapping. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. We also could do that automatically in the back if you don't do that. But this is just to help you explain how help you understand how Silk works. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click and start the import now. Um, and this should take not too long, maybe uh, 10, 20 seconds. No, maybe less. OK, cool. Um, and so now, if you were to go look at this, um, this website, uh, this Silk, it's actually live and on the Internet. Um, so in fact, I'll even quick ch chat this out to people. So if they wanted to go and check this, they can. Um, by default, we just because we detected the images, we'll generate a gallery like this. Um, just so people can see it um, and help them get an idea around the data. Um, so you remember that spreadsheet that we were looking at? That spreadsheet is now in Silk. Exactly the same thing. Uh, the spreadsheet, of course, is a lot uglier, and you can't turn it into visualizations. But that's the whole point of Silk. We'll take your spreadsheets or your data and turn it into something online that you can see quickly and easily. So now let's go ahead and build that map. Um, I'm going to go up to the visualization palette, and I'm going to pick the map icon right here, which is right in the middle. And we may automatically detect the location that's appropriate. We don't in this case. Um, sometimes we do that, which is nice, uh, usually if the word map or location is in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, OK, so map location is here. I'm going to select the row value that I want to be for the map. So for example, when you go back and look at your spreadsheet, and this is just basic mapping, map software can't just look at this and say, oh, I know what I want to build a map from. You have to tell it which column, in this case the map location column, I'll make it a little bigger, um, it has the data that you want to build the map from. Uh, it's not letting me go more than 200, so let me go up to 250 just to make it a little more visible. And you, so you can see, this is the data that I'm picking, map location column J. In Silk, I'm picking for the location to be the plot, map location. And now you see all the pins start to drop in. Um, now, we wanted to also do a color by plot. So we had in the impact map that you saw um, you know, on the home page, uh, you saw a distribution of, or I'm sorry, you saw a color by of the industry categories because there's a bunch of different industries that are using open data sets in their nonprofits. And so here I just clicked the color by and I selected industry category. Okay. And now you can see um, that all of this has been populated. It has a nice key. Um, and this map is now built. It's actually a public URL that you could go and explore if you wanted to, and go build your own visualizations. Let's add even a little more to this. Um, so I'm going to add a nice little filter. And I'm going to filter by region. Okay, And so now you can filter down to the specific regions. So for example, if we wanted to focus on Latin America and the Caribbean, it will automatically drop the filter down and show this as a map. Um, now these filters are accessible also to people on the Internet. Um, so I'm going to just clear this filter quickly, and then I'll just add it back on really fast. Sorry. Um, and I'm going to publish this map to the home page of myself. Uh, Susan, am I going too fast, or is this OK? I think you're showing the connection between taking a, a spreadsheet, a relational database, and then turning it into a map of visualization. So um, I think for folks to get that connection, and I, I like that you're showing the column headers too, so folks know what categories you're focusing on. Cool. OK, so if I'm going too fast, please shout at me. Um, I, you know, I'm very happy to slow down. Um, so as you see, we now have it done. Um, this is the exact same map that you would see on the page of the webinar silk that I built for you. I can go and edit this. Oh, sorry, sometimes it does that. Um, let me go back to the home page. Basically, I have forgot to click Edit Home Page. Uh, we're very careful about data. Maybe we don't want people to lose their data. So 
um, you have to be in edit mode to edit things like text or maps once you're on the home page or once you're on a published page. So I'm going to title this map for webinar. And if I wanted to add a caption down here, a data source with a URL, um, I can add that pretty quickly and easily. So I basically just highlighted, I typed in the text, and then I highlighted it, and I typed in a URL, um, and it would put the data source right there. I'll do that again, uh, www.techsoup.org. Click, and now you see it's highlighted. Um, so you can see down there that's highlighted. Um, so I'm going to save this page. Um, and just to quickly review this, so first part, mission accomplished. Um, impact map built. Um, now let's build a sortable table. So because we already have the data inside of Silk, we actually don't need to import it again. Um, so I'm going to build the visualizations in a slightly different way now. And rather than go back into the Explore tab up at the top, I'm going to uh, click on one of these plus handles in the pages. Okay? And that lets you, if you're editing a page, it lets you access all of the visualization types that you would want anyway. Um, and so also the visualization engine. So I just click visualization. So to go over the steps again, I click edit page, green plus handle, visualization. And now I'm going to click table. And so it will automatically go ahead and start building the table. And I can pick whatever column headers I want for that table. I don't need to use all of them. Um, so for example, I could pick state country, um, maybe we'll pick also um, industry category like we had. And again, we can add a nice filter. So let's say we want to filter by region again. We'll leave that there. And if you wanted to filter any of the values in the tables, and this also works in any of the visualization types as well too. We have a very robust filter engine so that if I only wanted to show 20 of the rows, because 48 rows in one page is an awful lot, and I'm default showing from A to Z, okay? Um, that will modify the table so that it will show only 20 rows on the page. So right now, okay, that was let, let's we're still editing the page. So I'll go ahead and edit table, sortable table for webinar. Okay, so that was the second. Um, it's prompting me to save because it wants me to make sure I'm saving my data. So that was the second mission from what we were trying to do. Um, to show you the sortability, we could sort on founding year, for example, and then it'll show um, reverse order or order. Um, if I wanted to filter here by the region, again, we did that before. We'll do it again. Now we'll just limit down so that it's only showing North America. Um, so you basically have now a sortable table that you can publish on the Internet very easily. Um, and again, to remind you, there's a share and embed button. So that means that other people or you can generate this table and embed it elsewhere. Or you can also um, share it as a short link in other places. Okay? Um, or you also have social features. So for example, it should generate a nice little, yeah, okay, yeah, we got it good. So we have a Facebook preview, which is very nice. So for those of you that are very focused on social media, this makes it a really nice way for you to share visualizations quickly and easily without having to go and cut and paste images and worrying about things like that. Um, and on the same sharing note, as I said before, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Medium. Um, Medium is an absolutely beautiful blogging platform that's from uh, the guy it's very quickly. Um, and Silk is one of two visualization platforms that has visualizations working on Medium. Um, so right now, um, there's it's most people, you just have to put a static image here. On Silk, um, when you put visualizations on Medium, we actually have live maps and interactions. There are millions and millions of people on Medium, so this is another interesting publishing venue for you to think about. Um, let me go ahead and I'll close down these two windows because I don't need them anymore. Um, and back to what we were building. So we have the table. Okay. Um, let me go check back to my list. I believe the third part of the mission, if I'm not incorrect, Susan, was going to be uh, visualizations, right? Correct. Uh, okay, so let's How go. How to create an online interactive visualization. Okay, 
So um, the, the interactive visualizations are actually part and parcel of the, the, the storytelling canvas, and we weave them in very tightly. But you can also create them as sort of standalone pages or just standalone views, as I was showing you earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and save this page. I'm going to edit it again. Um, now I want to build, let's build more than one visualization. Uh, let's build a couple of them. And I'm going to click again. I'm in edit mode, as you see up here. I'm going to click on one of the green plus handles. Now where you see these three icons in a row here, you can actually click plus and create a section type. So this gives you some more variability around the layouts like you saw. So let's do something where we have three visualizations right next to each other. And rather than it be on a white background, I'll pick it on a dark background. Um, so to access the same visualization engine, again, click the plus handle inside of one of these dark windows. And I'm going to click visualization. And now let's go ahead and build that donut chart like I was showing you before. And I want to see, again, so this is a pretty good one. This is showing a distribution of organizations. That we, they're called company names, but of the nonprofit organizations by the region. Okay? So here we've constructed the visualization, and it's ready to go. If I wanted to add um, you know, any kind of filter or something like that, then I can again add a filter like before okay, on the organization, on the, um, on, on the on the visualization type. And so that makes it very easy for you to create custom views or have your users play with the views. Okay. Now I'm going to click done. And so now you'll see in a second that visualization is actually published um, you know, inside of our, our data story canvas. Um, now I don't necessarily like the way this is looking filtered by industry category. So I can actually get rid of that. And if I save the page, then you would see, okay, so now we've built an interactive visualization that's living right in this page. Let's do another one. So I'm going to go back up to the top again, click Edit. And um, one thing to remember, too, about visualizations is you probably want to educate yourselves on how to use them appropriately. Um, so for example, this is a good use of a donut chart because it has a nice tight legend on it. If we built a donut chart with a different type of data, so let's say we built one with, um, rather than region, it would be uh, country. And that's just going to be like one slice okay, per country. And I'm going to increase the number of slices you're seeing in the visualization to all. And very quickly, you have a mess that's hard to read. So with donut chart visualizations, you want generally no more than six or seven slices, and the rest should all be other. Um, every visualization type is different and has its own nuances. So let's build a different visualization type because we did a visualization type there. I strongly recommend, and I'll share this with Susan as well. I wrote a little blog post about how you can um, build, uh, how to think about which visualizations for which data types. So let's, rather than build that, we're going to build instead a horizontal or a, a, a vertical um, bar chart. Um, and Something that's very nice about vertical bar charts is they show very well on mobile uh, because people are scrolling up and down a phone like that, right? So what we want to do for this too is to make it nice because right now this would be very long on our data canvas. I'm actually going to um, go ahead and limit this a little bit. So let's just limit down to just 10, okay? And so it's going to show the top 10 by value. Um, and if you see also, this is the distribution, which means account. Um, that's a little bit kind of like a pivot in a, in a table, but don't worry about that right now. So I have 10, so this is a nice workable size. I'm going to configure the colors as well. So one nice thing that Silk lets you do also is if you want to um, add colors to chart values or change the colors in your charts, we let you pick and choose and do some nice little different color variations. Or for example, if you're doing like red states, blue states, um, you know, red states can be blue, and um, you know, I mean, red states can be red, and blue states can be blue. Or if you wanted to signify danger or bad, you could use red. So this lets you make charts that are more credible. So right now, if you go look on your uh, this version of Silk, you would see again we made it responsive for the space. So there we've built the horizontal column chart, okay, and it's live interactive visualization sitting right there on your page. Um, Susan, how am I doing on time? 
you're fine on time. I think um, to like to slow down a little bit and show the, the steps because you're demonstrating these awesome visualizations, and I think folks like to see those steps that are behind it. So that's these are amazing, and I, we're getting a, a lot of questions about that. So um, in your next visualizations, the, the, the third one um, that you demo, just take it back down. Just start from the beginning so that folks see like that one, two, three step. Ah, okay, forgive me. I get too excited and move too quickly. So there's two ways to build visualizations in Silk. I'm going to – I showed you before about how to build them in the, in the Explorer mode. Let's go ahead and do that really quickly so you can see it. So you can always build a visualization in Explorer. And that's the tab at the top on the far right. If you click on it, it will give you access to the visualization palette, which shows all the visualization types that are accessible. If you click on a visualization type, so we built donuts and bars. Let's go ahead and um, now we'll build a, a, a vertical column chart or sorry, a horizontal column chart. So you click on the visualization type you want to build. Next, it will ask you what is the information you want to display in that visualization. So because we're looking for numbers in the charts, here we would actually select rather than um, a slice value or just like a, a, a view of each row, a distribution value, which is a count type. So there we could count Let's select region, okay? And you see here it shows distribution up here now, and I've selected region. And so now it will build uh, that chart showing you the different regions and the number of organizations in the different regions. And you can see that Latin American and Caribbean actually has the heaviest, um, followed by other parts of the world. Um, if I wanted to then change the colors, on these bars, I could click Configure Colors, which is a little thing down in the corner here. It's a little hard to see. Um, let me go ahead and blow up, and then I'll blow down. Um, uh, sorry. So you can see it a little better now. I click on that, and then I click on the bubble next to the, the Latin America, and then I can pick a different color. And then you'll see in the silk it shows up. Now, if I wanted to publish this to a page, I can do that. I can publish it to my home page. And now when we go back to the home page, so you recognize this, here is the chart that we just built. Now, if I wanted to go back instead, and see we're still in the same visualization, and rather than publish it to the home page, I wanted to just take this as a standalone visualization type then you would use the share bar for that. And you could either use it as an embed code, and this would be for embedding in a website, or you could publish it on Facebook by clicking the Facebook icon, and then it will show you the chart type there. Or you can um, publish it as a short link and save that to send out to people. And if they go to this link, it would show them precisely this visualization. Is that slow enough, Susan, or does that, does that slow it down quite a bit? That, that was perfect. I think um, folks just wanted to see that the data came from originally from a spreadsheet, just a simple spreadsheet, and you were able to pull it in to, to show it as a visualization and the different types of visualizations. So, so that is one way to make visualizations in the Silk. The other way is to actually edit them right into the pages, as we were doing before. Um, and you saw me clicking on green plus handles, creating these sections. Um, that's in-page data visualization, adding and editing. I'm going to shrink down a little bit. Um, and to do that, or to do those edits, like I said, you click on a green plus handle anywhere you see it in the page. So for example, there's one, there should be one floating around here somewhere. Let me shrink it down a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Um, and there's the third column that we had. I'm going to click this green plus handle, and then you get a selector box that opens up. And you can add different content types. So this allows you to add a text, uh, add images, YouTube videos, Twitter, or to add a visualization, just like you have in your visualization palette. Um, and so here I'm going to add 
a quick visualization using the uh, in-page editor. And so you saw me doing this uh, a horizontal uh, column chart before. Let's go ahead and build that same column chart, but using this editor. So the editor looks almost the same now. It's just now you're publishing something that's designed to go directly into the page. So again, I'm going to click, click distribution because I want to see a count okay, of values. And rather than do um, region, let's do industry category. There's going to be a bit of a wider count. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and filter down to um, the first five just to make the chart uh, a little more workable for our size. And again, I'm going to configure the colors so that they're a little prettier and a little less boring because if it's all the same color, nobody really likes that. Um, and now I'm going to click Done. And you see it says here, Editing Visualization for Page Test 2 Webinar. It's telling you what's happening. Once I click Done, then rather than explore where you're generating a visualization that sits in the standalone, this drops the visualization right into the page. If I wanted to cut that visualization and use it somewhere else, I can clip it. Click a plus bar somewhere. Down here is my clipboard. And it will drop right in. Um, so another thing to remember about all these elements that you see in Silk, they are all drag and drop. So every single thing that you see on these pages can be moved around and will resize to fit into the different visualization areas. So if you wanted the table to go above the map, we'll put the table up here. Um, so I think we, we, we've gone through the three missions. Do we have time for the last two or very quickly? Um, but, and before we get to that, we, we do have some, some questions um, that I think are, are common throughout. Talking about when you use Silk to create a website um, or the information, what about privacy? What about um, selecting things that are viewable only by select folks? So Silk is binary. Either it's entirely public or it's entirely private. If you wish to make your Silk private before you publish it, it's very simple. You would go into your dashboard. Then you would go to the Settings menu right here. Click Settings. And then down here you see Privacy. If you click Private, then your silk becomes private and it's no longer on the public internet. And you will see up here a padlock up here. Um, but and then in can terms folks of, invite invite people to that site to view it? Exactly. So then anyone who is invited to that site can view it. And you can do that by adding a member. Um, and that will let you sorry, I have to save this before uh, before it lets me get back into it. Um, if I click add a member then I can add a member down here by adding their email address as the editor. Okay? Um, and you can add as many people as you want. So if I wanted to add um, so Bard at TechSoupGlobal.org, you would get an email in a minute, Susan, saying, um, you know, hey, would you like to join my Silk? If you want to make it public, again, you just click Public. And this is another interesting feature about Silk, which is somewhat unique. If you're feeling, uh, if you want to, you can actually make it so that anybody who is a Silk member can edit your Silk. So that's really neat for like, say, if you have a community that wants to collaborate to build maps together, um, you can have everybody that's in your community come and edit your Silk uh, and add information or add data, add pictures, all of those kinds of things. Um, more questions quickly, or should I go on and do the employee directory real fast? I think as, as you um, upload that, a couple of specific questions about the types of Excel files that can be uploaded to use. So sure. are there any restrictions? So the restriction, the default restriction is 3,000 rows right now. We can extend that out to five or 6,000 for longer projects. We hope to make it much bigger in the near future. Um, but for now, that's sort of the limitation. For File types that we can accept, 
from Excel is XLS, XLSX, CSV. You can paste the Google Sheets URL into Silk, and if it's a public sheet or publicly shareable URL, that works as well. You can also cut and paste data into us. Um, and if you're technically inclined, you can import uh, what are called JSON files into Silk. Uh, in fact, I'll do an upload on this one rather than uh, just to show you how that works rather than a cut and paste. Um, so this is a little mini employee directory that I made um, of TechSoup personnel, uh, sort of a random selection. Um, and you can see like Susan's one of the people on here. Um, and I added some other folks. I also added an image from their LinkedIn page, which should work, and location, and their group. And if you see here too, uh, there's comma separation on some of the columns. So Silk can handle multiple values in a field. We call them, we call them facts, in a, in a, and we would call the column tags. Uh, so we can handle multiple facts in a tag set, um, and that lets you group things in a more dynamic way. But let's go ahead and build this really quickly. So Silk doesn't, is not limited to a single spreadsheet. You can add different collections, we call them, which would be a new spreadsheet. Um, and so I'm going to go and uh, click Upload Spreadsheet now. And I'm going to pick one from my desktop. And it's the TechSoup Global Webinar CSV file. I'm going to click Open. Now, um, I want to actually edit the collection name because otherwise it will get confused and start to think that this is the same collection as what we, oh, I'm sorry. Um, let me cancel that. Uh, so I, I was on the wrong, so this is, this is what I did wrong. Um, basically, I should have, um, I don't know if it does it with CSV. I'm, it might be with Google Sheets. It may not recognize the rows at the bottom. Um, but it, normally it does this pretty well. Let me try it again one more time really fast. Uh, I don't want to waste your time out here. But, um, so and anyway, when we're importing, when you import data into Silk, you should be in the dashboard mode. So this little white tab should be highlighted. That means you're here. And you'll see all of your data cards. So these are all the organizations that we uploaded before. Um, and these are the options down here for new collection types, which is what we were talking about, ways to get data in. Um, so let me try that spreadsheet again really quickly and see if it, it should pick up the different collection types. If it doesn't, then that might be a slight bug, and you have to forgive me for that. Um, so it's picking up that. That's not the data that I want, actually. Yeah, okay. Let me go ahead and just do a cut and paste again. Sorry about that. And I'll, I'll, I, but trust me, it does work on XLFX, XLS, and CSV. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, so I'm going to grab that data. I'm going to go back in. So I copied and pasted it. It's in my clipboard again. We're going to paste that in. And we're going to create very quickly a TechSoup uh, employee directory with seven employees. And so you can see all the data is in here. There's Susan's picture. Um, this is her expertise. She probably has a lot more than this, but I just sort of put something together. Now I clicked the gear, bu the gear button next to the expertise row. And the reason I did that is because I want to split these values on commas. So now, I actually misspelled education, forgive me. Um, I'll have to go in and fix that. Uh, when you do that, Silk will recognize each one of those values as an individual data value. And you'll see why that's nice in a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and click Import. And as that's importing, um, I did want to, to um, address some questions as well that we have sure. as you're showing the import. Great. Um, when you upload a spreadsheet, does it automatically become public? Uh, yes, if you, but you can quickly go and, like I said, you can set the default. So as soon as you upload that spreadsheet, if you basically go and change the settings to private, that's totally fine. And does Silk work as easily on an Apple platform as PC? I'm doing this on an Apple platform. Excellent. Um, some folks are wondering about the, the maps that you've created. What about if they wanted to make that interactive for the community to, to like, uh, manipulate themselves? That's, yes, if, you, if they are members of Silk and you set your Silk to um, Silk members can edit, 
then they can go and they can actually edit the contents of the data cards. Great. Which is essentially the contents of the maps. Great. What about exporting from Silk? Um, you uh, wanted to take one of the data visualizations and uh, put it in PowerPoint. So for that, we don't have a specific capability, but if you do a quick screenshot of the PowerPoint, uh, I mean of the, of the visualization, it works fine. And we have people doing that all the time. I mean, frankly, I know this sounds bad, but we built Silk to move away from PowerPoint. <laughs> so we, have, we didn't really think so much about how do we create static images to put into PowerPoint. <laughs> Okay. Uh, fair enough. Um, what about if some folks are thinking they've got multiple spreadsheets? Can Silk upload and read multiple spreadsheets at one time? Absolutely. I mean, not simultaneously, but yes, you can have multiple collections, and each collection can be a different, uh, you know, a different set of information. Now, it's kind of like a spreadsheet in that, um, you know, you don't want to, for example, put your employee directory into the same Silk as your impact map. Because each is a standalone website. It has its own URL. Um, so you have to sort of think of it as, as rather than I am publishing a spreadsheet, I am publishing a website. Do I want, is this the way I would want users to interact with it? That said, you may want to say publish an impact story map and a corporate report or, you know, or a quarterly report or a donor report in the same silk. And that's totally doable from different spreadsheets. Great. How would you recommend that folks um, access support for if they're an organization and they'd like to use Silk versus an individual? We have some folks that are very interested in using this. Uh, so as an organization, we try to support people as best we can, and we get back to them fairly quickly. It's also a pretty easy tool, so usually once people get to know it, um, they have no problem. So I can say like inside of TechSoup, I don't think we've gotten any support calls in the past three months because I think you have some internal champions that are now pretty good at this stuff. Um, we also have a full support section um, with videos and tutorials that go into much, uh, much, greater, much greater depth than, uh, you know, than the stuff that I'm showing you right now. I'm oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, that's our beautiful um, error icon. We actually have a, a visual artist who did our, who did our um, you know, he did our, our, everything on Silk, and it's, it's beautiful stuff. So hang on, I'll pull that up really fast just so you can see it. Uh, I'm going to go to the home page, and there we have a help button. No. Well, and as you're showing that, we are going to be supplying everyone with a link to your website so they can also get support. Folks are wondering about Very a resource good. guide as well. Uh, meaning for this webinar? Um, uh, for, for Silk in general. Uh, can you use it for a resource guide or how to use it? I think a how-to resource guide, exactly. Yeah, so that's what this, this section would be. We have a full knowledge base with um, videos on how to make basic silks, how to do spreadsheet imports, lots of different topics. Um, and if you can't find what you're looking for in there and you email us, we'll get back to you pretty quickly and, and, and tell you how to do what you're trying to do. And it may not be possible inside of Silk. It's not an unlimited platform. We do mm -hmm. have some limits just to make it simple. So for example, like the visualizations and the layouts, you can't customize fonts inside the visualization. Uh, you know, you can't uh, write CSS inside of the pages, or you can't alter the HTML of the pages. It's really designed for people that aren't accessing code. So that does limit your customization. Great. And one more quick thing. Um, a lot of folks are asking about the cost to this um, to nonprofits and um, the fee associated for nonprofits. So this is free for nonprofits. The only thing we would charge for um, would be something like when TechSoup did, um, did, did their impact map. Uh, you see, they have their logo on every page, and they also did some customization around the fonts. Um, and uh, you know something to match their color palette, this nice sort of blue story bar, um, and the URLs. But frankly, we're not really interested in charging nonprofits much anyway. We certainly wouldn't charge small nonprofits um, for anything at all uh, because um, it, you know we, we don't think it's a great way to make money off of nonprofits. We think making money off of guys like banks and lawyers and you know sort of large pu profitable publicly you know public companies is a better way to do it. Um, so the um, short answer is the cost for nonprofits to start is zero. If you want to customize, we'll talk about it. I can't imagine it being more than ten or fifteen dollars a month. Great. We've got time um, for one more question. Um, 
would the maps work with touchscreen technology? Um, so I don't know. Uh, I mean, we are using everything on this is multi-touch, but we haven't tried it. I mean, if you had a multi-touch screen on the touch screen, then you might. But I don't know enough to really answer that question effectively. Okay. And that's fair enough. We do have a couple of other um, specific questions about um, other programs and um, compatibility with Silk that we are going to answer on the back end and put in our question and answer document that we will be sending to folks at um, probably within the week so that Alex will be able to answer some more of those questions. Um, our time has come to an end. And oh no, Alex we didn't get to finish everything. I know. Um, well, you know what? That that will just that will give us an opportunity to have a second level training on Silk because there are so many things that you can do very easily with the program. And since the program is something you can go to right now, play around in, um, we do encourage folks to do that. That's how I um, got started. So I can tell you that if I can get in there and start doing some things, um, everybody can. Um, we know we've covered a lot today, and some of you still do have questions that we will address in our Q&A. So I wanted to make sure that we got some feedback from all of you. If you would chat in the box one thing that you learned in today's webinar, and we know we covered a lot pretty quickly, but we want to know at least one thing that you learned today. So as you're chatting that in, um, I did want to remind folks that this entire month is we're talking about data, and we have some other upcoming webinars, um, and those in the month of February we have. And it does look like we've got a lot of people that learned a tr tremendous amount. And it's true that it's right from a spreadsheet. You are correct. Everyone that's plugging in, yep, go right from a spreadsheet. And if there is an, an image link, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, that would, that's how we got those employee pictures that were right up there. That's correct. That you should. It, can't, it can't be from like Dropbox or, or, or um, Google Drive because they, per, they prevent that. But if it's published on the Internet like in WordPress, it's very easy to do that, yes. Great. So right from a spreadsheet, all the things that you can potentially do for data visualization. So great. Um, we're going to follow up with everyone in email. I want to thank Alex for taking the time to put this together. He's got such a wealth of information. And I'm sorry we didn't get to every single thing um, during this hour, but we do value your time and we appreciate you coming today. Um, we also want to thank ReadyTalk, our platform. Um, for providing us this platform today and for all of our webinars. Um, yes, I see a lot of folks saying they want a silk too. So we can think about that. And we want to thank everyone, especially you Alex, and also Allie on the back end for answering the questions for the technical support. Thank you all. Have a great day.